Hi YouTube, I'm Imon, and welcome back to one of my auto repair videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how to back flush your heater core for a 2004-2009 Toyota Prius. The reason you would want to back flush your heater core is to get rid of any contaminants or uh, clogs in your heater core. And you probably want to do this on any old car or any car that might have problems with the heating system. So the way that the heater core works is that air, uh, hot coolant from the engine after it's heated up it will circulate in through the left side, according to this diagram. And then, after it goes in the heater core, it will circulate through the car in order to heat it up, if you have the heating turned on. And then that heat, I mean that hot coolant, will be uh, circulated out on the right side, uh, which would be this hose. Okay, I got a flashlight. It will be circulated out the right side. See, the, see where the two hoses end? It would circulate out the right side, and it would go to the auxiliary water heater pump, which is sort of over there. I can't really point it out right now. So, the way that we're going to do this is we're going to hook up a few hoses to the heater core. And we have one here, and one here. There really isn't any special tool that we have to use. Uh, we just made this out of uh, some hoses and a valve uh, that we have right here. Now, before you do this, just know that first off, you should disconnect the battery, uh, obviously. Uh, and second off, you should uh, remove the windshield cowl, uh, which we have a video on, on. Uh, go check that out, in order to access the heater core. Alright, so there's two, uh, two things that we can do at this point after we disconnect the battery. Uh, first off is either drain the system entirely, or the alternative, which is using uh, clamp, uh, clamps. And as you can see, we have clamps already, right there, they're the red one. Uh, they're about $7 or $8 at Harbor Freight Tools. Uh, and after that, what you want to do is you want to hook up these uh, hoses to the uh, two holes where the uh, regular hoses go in. And as you can see, they sh there should be two holes because that's where that's what the diagram says. Now, after that, what you want to do is you want to cover the inverter just in case any water comes out. Uh, so we have it right here. Um, and I guess now we can get to demonstrating it. So we have a valve right here, just so we can open the water when we flush the uh, heater core. And actually, when I think about it, it's actually kind of in reverse of what the cooling system does because it goes in on the left and it comes out on the right. What we're doing is we're putting water in the right and it's coming out the left. And after that, you should have a bucket for, all, for it all to drain into. So what we're gonna do is we're going to slowly let water out and it should circulate into the heater core, circulate around it, and then that should sort of like uh, mingle with any clogs or contaminants and then it will bring that, those clogs or contaminants out the hose and into the bucket. It's very important that we uh, open the valve very very slowly because tap water normally comes out around 30 to 60 psi and the system can only handle about 10 to 15 psi. So that's why we want to open it slowly. Uh, second, secondly, uh, the pipe is around 75 feet away and we have it like hooked all the way around the house uh, the garage in order to get it here So we can't control it from the valve So we have to have a second valve right here And if we the reason that we don't want to do uh, do it too much is if we do it too much Then the heater core will not be able to handle it and it will break and The heater core breaking uh, you don't want to do that You're gonna have to open your dashboard and everything and it's just gonna be too much of a hassle so make sure you open this really really slowly and I think that's it. Oh, also, wait. Also, you want to make sure that this is tight so no water comes out. And you also want to have two clamps uh, just to make sure that the hoses, the hoses don't uh, come off. So I think we can start doing it. All right. Very slowly. Okay. All right. So I think this is good. So as you can see, water is snaking out, and so some of the coolant that's in the heater core is also snaking out as well. And it's draining into this bucket. Alright, uh, it doesn't, it looks like it can handle just a bit more. Very slowly, I might add. You might... Okay. I don't want to do it too fast, and I think it can handle this. And as you see, it's coming down at a faster rate. Just make sure you uh, control the rate so that it doesn't break the heater core. Alright.
All right, so it's always a good idea to reverse the flow. And as you can see, we have the hoses uh, hooked up uh, in reverse. So the water is actually going in onto the left and it's coming out on the right. Uh, the reason that we have this hose right here is because this one wasn't long enough. Um, however, we're going to try doing this again. And like I said, turn this on gradually. Oh. Not too much. All right, so let's look at the bucket now. So, um, kind of looks like there's some dirt in there. Um, that's probably not due to the heater core. It's because this uh, hose itself is dirty. Uh, so when you're doing this, make sure to use a clean or a clear hose. Uh, just make sure that there's no there's no other things that affect uh, the quality of this water. But it doesn't look like too much has changed. All right, so we've already done the. Uh, Back, uh, back flush a couple of times back and forth and now the predicament is we have water in the heater core and there isn't supposed to be water in the heater core there's supposed to be coolant so the conundrum is how do we get the water out and what we're going to do is we're going to actually inject or put some coolant into the heater core and we have a funnel right here connected to the hose and what we're going to do is we're going to put some uh, coolant in the top and hopefully it should redirect in and then direct the water out and you want to keep doing this until the color of the liquid that's coming out is the color of the actual coolant and not the color of water or the mixed coolant right here. So I guess it would be a darker shade of pink probably. So we're gonna, so you can use any coolant for this. There are many types like uh, radiator coolant, uh, like the SLC, SLLC, uh, this Toyota Super Long Life coolant. Uh, that's recycled coolant. I'm not too worried about that or you can just use a, a coolant that you could find at Walmart or AutoZone. So we have coolant right here. I, I'm told that the heater core holds around 2.5 quarts, so you're probably ha gonna have to put in more than that. So before you do this, just make sure there isn't any kinks in your hose that will stop you from putting the coolant in. Hopefully that isn't too much of a problem. We'll see uh, as we put this in. One more thing before we put this in, uh, just note that you should use uh, hybrid coolant for this, not regular coolant, and you, it's indicated usually on the coolant itself. It says professional hybrid organic acid technology. Uh, my dad says H-O-A-T. Uh, it should also be silicate and borate free, usually. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna hold this up, and we're gonna pour this in. And I should probably hold this by the back so it's easier to pour. Make sure that this doesn't pull through. Okay. So the kink in the hose will have to be sorted out off camera, but for now, yep, we're gonna have to do it right now because it looks like the coolant's actually not gonna be able to pass through easily. So I'll be right back. We're almost out of coolant in this uh, cup, I think. All right, just hold it up. Just put this down so coolant flows easily. All right, so as you can see, uh, from looking at the uh, output, that the coolant that's coming out has changed color a bit. It's a bit orange. I can't really show you because I'm holding coolant in my other hand, but it's a bit red or orange on that side. So as we add more coolant, what you want to do is you want to keep doing it until it should be a consistent color. So you might lose coolant this way, and that's all right because you can't have a, some gain without a little pain. And also we have some clamp right here in order to get any kinks out of the hose. All right. So just keep doing this until you're comfortable and feel that you have, you, you put enough coolant in. Okay, now I'm gonna add more. I just gotta make sure that my funnel doesn't over overflow. All right, see, it's more of a consistent orange pink now. I'm gonna add some more. And my cup, my cup's empty. Whew. All right, so with that, I think we're done. Now, before I go, 
I just want to talk about uh, the hoses themselves. So we didn't actually show you how to take out the hoses and taking out the hoses is very tricky. And same thing with putting the hoses back in. Now, with taking out the hoses, uh, it's very tricky to take out these clamps for us, uh, especially because for, for us, it was actually broken, uh, actually bent, I think. And, and we actually had, had to end up breaking it in order to take it out. Now, we tried using this tool right here, which is flexible for taking out clamps. It was a bit tricky as well. And also, when you're, when you're actually taking or wiggling out the hose itself, you don't want to use your hands. You're going to end up breaking the hose. Uh, no, you're going to end up breaking the neck of the heater core, which is going to end up with you having to replace the entire heater core. And like I said before, that is a huge hassle. You don't want to do that. So you want to use a tool like this, which are hose pliers. So you just want to grip around the... Uh, oh. You just want to grip around the hose, which this would be where the neck is, and then you just want to sort of slowly and gently take it out. Make sure you don't break it. We also want to mention that it's actually hard to put this clear hose on because first off, it's a bit hard to navigate in the back over there, and second off because this hose ha the uh, neck actually has a uh, enlarged opening, so at the stump of it, it would be larger, but at the back of it, it would be thinner, so that the clamp would actually secure it. Now, as for putting the hoses back in, like this, what you want to do is you actually want to put the uh, clamps on first. Let's see, I don't have a, but I'll just use this mod. So you want to, so pretend this is the neck. What you want to do is you want to put the clamp in first, then you want to hook up the hose, and then you want to put the clamp onto the hose. Because when you, if you put the clamp on the hose first, and then you try to put it in, it's going to be a bit harder to get past that uh, enlarged stump. And I guess that's it. So I'm Aiman, and thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and look at other videos on I and Aiman, especially the Toyota Prius videos. And I'll see you there. So, oh yeah, also one more thing. Um, if you want to do what we're doing, make sure to use these host pliers. It's going to be Im almost impossible if you don't use these. Yeah, so, signing out. Peace. <laughs>